What's the excuse of climate alarmists for banning any criticism of the climate hysteria from TV, for forcing climate propaganda onto children in schools, for censoring social media, for hounding climate skeptics out of university jobs and professions? All of this and more is done on the basis of one big lie. How can you possibly be right when 97% of scientists think otherwise? Ah, the so-called 97% consensus on climate. Here's my handy guide to that particular slice of climate BS. Here's Bill Nye, the science guy, telling us how it works. If you're wondering why climate alarmism is never subjected to scrutiny or criticism on TV, it's because of those 98%. Bill's even added a percentage point for good luck. If you have 98% of scientists believing one way and 2% believing another, you don't need as a journalistic organization to report on the 2%. And here's the hilarious John Oliver illustrating the 97% consensus using badly paid actors in lab coats. In the interest of mathematical balance, I'm going to bring out two people who agree with you, climate skeptic, and Bill Nye, I'm also going to bring out 96 other scientists. <laughs> How dare anybody question the climate alarm when 97% of experts agree? The claim that 97% of scientists buy into the climate alarm comes from a climate activist named John Cook. Cook and his friends looked at 12,000 academic papers on the subject of climate change. Now, as any real scientist knows, such a study is riddled with bias from the start. That's because academics who do not believe that climate change is a problem tend not to waste their time writing about it. Right from the start, Cook chose papers written by people who believe in the climate alarm, or at least are prepared to play along in order to get a climate grant. There's even more bias springing from the fact that academics who openly reject the idea of a climate crisis often find that journals refuse to publish their papers. There are indeed lots and lots of academic papers about climate change. And that's because there's billions of dollars in government funding available for any academic willing to do one. This is how it works. Academics of every kind, desperate for a grant, just put climate and beside whatever they want to study and the money starts flowing. Climate and monkeys, climate and tourism, climate and literature, you name it. To qualify for climate money, of course, you have to pay lip service to global warming. So by definition, very few, if any, of the papers that Cook is choosing to look at are likely to say that climate change is a load of BS. If they did, the funding agencies might ask for their money back and the authors would be cut off from any further climate funding. In other words, the authors of these papers have a direct financial interest in going along with the climate alarm, even though they may know nothing about climate science and may not even think it's a problem. There's a huge bias in the sample, but there's also a huge bias in the handling of the data. Of these 12,000 so-called climate papers, how many of them explicitly stated the view that we are facing a human-caused climate crisis? Was it 97%? The data on which the claim was based has been re-examined by Professor David Legates, a state climatologist and former director of the Center for Climatic Research at the University of Delaware. He found that Cook himself could find only 64 papers, or 0.5% of the total, that explicitly stated that recent warming was mostly man-made. He concluded that in fact, only 0.3% of the 11,944 papers explicitly supported the view that current warming was definitely caused by humans and we are facing a climate crisis. Turns out that most of the papers were not even by scientists actually studying climate change and its causes. Indeed, many were not written by scientists at all. Professor Mike Hume, one of the UK's most senior climate scientists, called it poorly conceived, poorly designed, and poorly executed. U.S. scientist Jose Duarte called the study completely invalid and untrustworthy, and by customary scientific standards, completely unpublishable. We now know the study was a political operation from start to finish. This is garbage. In short, the idea that 97% of scientists who know what they're talking about agree that there is a climate crisis is 100% hogwash. So where does this leave the climate consensus? It is true that if you hang around university students, academics, government bureaucrats, democratic politicians, and some others, you'll find a lot of them buying into the climate alarm. But this has nothing to do with science. Climate hysteria goes with a certain political viewpoint. Solving the so-called climate problem means higher taxes and ever more government control. It's hardly surprising, therefore, that climate appeals to government bureaucrats and those on the left. Most of what Europeans call the intelligentsia, in other words, people in the media, Hollywood, and academia, are left-leaning, for reasons we'll explore elsewhere. In these circles, to express skepticism about global warming is a breach of social etiquette. It's like saying you love Donald Trump. In a word, 
This consensus is political. It's not scientific. In fact, it represents an assault on science for it acts to discourage, bully, and intimidate anyone who dares to challenge the climate alarm. My name is Tom Nelson, and you're watching Guerrilla Science. Please donate and subscribe to our YouTube channel.